If you want to be part of the game industry, then watch this video here, because I promise I will have some useful tips for you. Let's talk about five tips. So just as a little disclaimer, for every tip, I will leave some reading, information, links, videos, whatever in the description. So take a look. Let's start directly with my first tip. Search for an internship. We all know this problem. For jobs, we need work experience, but we can't gain work experience without working. But we don't get these jobs because we have no work experience. <laughs> that is a problem. But as far as I experienced it, the game industry is different. Companies actually want to teach you something. Maybe not all, but a lot. And of course those internships may have some requirements. You need obviously a passion for game development. Uh, sometimes you need some coding or art experience. Um, often you need to be a student at the university in uh, respective field. Uh, computer science, media design, something like that. But there are companies who will take you in as an intern with no prior experience. At least that is what happened to me. And maybe it will take some time, but take a look through job portals, take a look through LinkedIn job offerings, whatever. Maybe you will find a company which suits your experience and what you want to learn. And if you watched my how I became a game designer video, then you'll know that I didn't have any experience in my first internship. I never did a game or something related. I just was incredibly motivated and I showed that to the company and it worked out for me. Maybe it will also work out for you. My second tip is study it. Yes, studying game development or game design or game art or game development in general is possible. But it could be expensive. As a German, I cannot am speaking from a privileged position when I'm talking about education, because education in Germany is almost entirely free. Just have to pay 200, 300 euros per semester, so every six months. That's not the case in US America or also some other European countries. But studying something like game development is really useful because in most cases it's very practical, whereas computer science in a lot of universities is theoretical. So my tip if you want to study something like game development or game design is just look around. Maybe you find something which isn't that expensive, for example public universities in Germany or maybe you'll find a scholarship or something else. And if you don't find anything in your country or you don't manage to get in a university to study game development or game design, then look for something similar. In the end, companies or yourself when you want to make indie games, you don't care what exactly you studied. It's about what skills you have and what experience you have. And it doesn't matter where you get it from a course like game design or from a course like computer science or media design in general. And if you need some arguments for your parents because they say mm, making games that isn't a job, <laughs> then you can just say something like yeah the game industry makes more than 180 billion dollars every year. In comparison kind of the movie industry they they just managed to get 21 billion dollars or if you are an employed game developer or game designer, you can start with a salary for like almost 5,000 euros per month. That is 800 to 900 euros more than the average person in Germany gets from their company. Just if you need some arguments for your parents. Let's get going with my third tip, game jams. You should participate in game jams. Why? Game jams used to be very scary for me. I didn't have any knowledge about game development. I wasn't able to use something like Unity, Godot or Unreal. And then you have to make a game with a specific topic in three days. I wasn't convinced at first, but now I love 
participating in game jams. It's really cool. You don't need experience to get into a game jam. The main thing about game jams is that you're having fun creating games. It doesn't matter if it's good or not. Nobody expects to develop a game in three days that have the most brilliant ideas with the best gameplay and it's bug free and polished and that's, it, it just doesn't matter if it's good or not. It matters if you had fun and if you learned something. At least that's how game jams are for me. And I can promise you, you will learn something in every game jam. Maybe you have a cool idea you want to pursue. Maybe you learn some new cool people you want to do projects with or who just inspire you or who are just cool to talk to. Or you learn new skills. For example, on my second game jam, I actually started using Unreal. Didn't work out pretty well, but now five or six months later, I can use Unreal. And just because I took the leap of faith and started using Unreal in this game jam. <laughs> I promise you will learn something and you should definitely try out. Don't be scared. You don't need to work in a team. You can work by yourself. It's just, it's just great. In the end, you, it's just about having fun. All right, my fourth tip of the day uh, is networking. Connecting with people is extremely important, not just in the gaming industry, just in general. So go ahead, create an Insta account or LinkedIn or Twitter or Reddit or whatever social media account you can think of. Just don't create one in every social media page because you will get overwhelmed. But start with something small, maybe Twitter. I am on Twitter actively. Uh, I like it more than Instagram actually, but that's just my opinion. Just start talking about game dev, engage in different conversations. It will have several benefits. For example, you can grow a small fan base by showing off your stuff, by engaging conversation, conversation, by helping other people. You're, so you have a little fan base uh, who, uh, which will actually download and play your game when you are making one. You can get inspired by other people. You can get help from other people. And maybe someday somebody you know on LinkedIn or on Twitter needs somebody for a job or can work or or can work. Recommend, re re doch, re recommend, can recommend you for a job. <laughs> it is just in every situation incredibly helpful to talk to as many people as you can, to just get inspired, to just learn something new, get out of your own bubble. I, I promise it will have some benefits for you. <laughs> Let's get going with my last tip use assets. I have the feeling there's a common misconception about using assets, that it's bad and it sucks or you are a bad game developer when you're using assets. Maybe this is true if you just copy and paste an entire 3D environment and say that you did that, yeah, that sucks. But with everything else, people who say using assets is bad practice or using assets makes you a bad game developer, just don't have any idea how hard game developing actually is. You can't do everything on your own. And maybe you can try, maybe it works out for you, but taking assets and shaping them to your own will that it fits in your game with your vision, that isn't bad, that's actually good because you don't need to reinvent the wheel. If you're not a programmer, you hate programming, but you want to make games, Programming shouldn't stop you from making games. That's very important. For example, let's say you just want to make a game solely based on dialogues. But now you have the problem that you need to program a whole dialogue system. I can promise you, either if you use Unreal or Unity, Godot or whatever, somebody already did the dirty work of programming a very useful dialogue system. And why shouldn't you be able to use that? Why should it be forbidden just because some people see it as bad practice? It is not. Doing everything by yourself, struggling, and maybe giving up on the whole project or giving up game development altogether because you just don't like programming. That is bad. And in the end, 
there's people who tell you that using assets is bad and they do everything by, their, by themselves. They Google their code on the internet, just copy and paste it. And I mean, what the hell is the difference? <laughs> so yeah, don't reinvent the wheel. If somebody else did the dirty work that you don't want to do, then just use it. The only downside is that maybe it could be expensive. For example, a dialogue system isn't free or cheap, I guess. Just don't reinvent the wheels. If you can and if you want to, use some assets. But it's definitely good to learn something. Some basics of programming, some basics of Unreal Blueprinting, some basics of 3D modeling. As I said, it is good practice to use assets to shape them to your game or shape assets to your vision. That is good, but that also means that you need to learn a bit of programming sometimes or a bit of blueprinting, but actually it is manageable. I hope you can use one or two of my tips. I think I got something for everyone, either just making games or actually getting into the industry or just being an indie creator. I think I've got some tips for everyone. <laughs> Share the video with everyone who wants to make games and absolutely need to know these tips because I think they could be pretty valuable. For more questions or tips or whatever you have, you can contact me. Uh, everything is every contact. Every, my contact details are in the description. Check out my other videos where I talk about uh, studying animation and game in Germany. Or maybe just check out my whole channel. I've probably got some videos where I talk about game development. <laughs> Alright, thank you very much for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.